The Levy Center on the campus of Santa Clara University is the site for the Central Coast Section Division I Girls Championship game. The top seeded Gun Titans facing off against their league rival, the number three seed, the Palo Alto Vikings. Not only is this a rematch of last year's title game, which was won by Palo Alto, this is the rubber match for the season. These two teams split their league showdown, so two teams which know each other so very, very well. Palo Alto and their traveling green, white, and gold jerseys, the Gun Titans, white, red, and navy blue. Underway at Levy Center, Kirsten Fairchild, Sean Hennessy bringing you the action, and the Vikings start us off right to left. Oh, it should be so interesting here. Both these teams very familiar, one and one, and Kirsten, you just mentioned it, the rubber match. It doesn't get any better than this for the championship game. Three-point attempt, just like that, drained by Stephanie Allen, the five-foot-eight junior. Vikings up three-nothing. A smooth shot from the three-point arch, and it's nice to see the comfort level right from the get-go from Stephanie Allen to step up and drain the three. Pally won the championship last year, 54-44 over Gunn. Driving to the lane, nice dish off. Baseline jumper, a miss, and Allen there for the rebound. Allen right underneath the bucket right there, and you saw uh, Maggie on call to have a pretty open shot right there, just kissed off the rim, and now you're gonna see Palo Alto with a quick transition. And taking it into the paint, into the hands of Zoe Zwirling, the five foot eight sophomore guard. She is the shooting guard running the show today. Claire Klausner, the five foot seven junior point guard, wearing number 11 for Gunn. Getting it to her center. That's Catherine Perez, a six foot two senior forward, the leading scorer on this Gunn team. Minute 10 gone. Pally on defense with a three nothing lead. And Catherine Perez on the previous trip swatted the ball away on the defensive side. A very, very nice play. And uh, just a few moments ago, we saw her quickness. Missed three by Gunn and the rebound by number 34, Josie Butler, the six foot two senior. This is Lindsey Black, number 22, missing. Black, a five foot seven senior. Not a friendly rim for Pally. Oh my goodness, that one rolled around probably two or three times before it kissed off the side of the glass. Rounding out the starting lineup for Gunn is number 13, Julia Magin Calda, the five foot 11 senior forward. This is Majin Calda with the ball quickly over to her point guard, Klausner. Good passing perimeter from Gunn. Shot clock down to two and into the hands of Allen. Great Allen, defense. two on two, is going to hold up and let her offense reset. The only starter I didn't mention for Pally, number four, Emily Osagati, five foot 11 senior and a scoring threat. You see the double team on black when she gets the ball on the outside wing. Josie Butler missing the jump shot. Little cold shooting on the early going for these two teams. They compete in the Santa Clara Valley Athletic League Deanne's division. Both went 10 and two to finish in a three-way tie with Wilcox. Wilcox was the number two seed before being upset by Pally in the semifinals. Three rims out and into the hands of Susco, Annie Susco, the five foot eight junior with the rebound. It's so a lot of one and out here in the early going. Absolutely, some quick trips right here. Going back to Emily Redfield's shot for the Titans. She had an open look, top of the key, three point range, just a little bit too quick on the shot. She didn't set, take her time. And you're seeing that quite a bit here early on by both teams. Redfield driving hard to the hoop, still cannot get it through, but she will head to the line to shoot two. 4.55 left to go in the first. Redfield at the line. Excuse me, pardon me, correction, Perez at the line looking for the first points for her Gun Titan squad. And I think it's just more nerves than anything else right now. Just both teams trying to settle in, get a feel for what's going on in this championship matchup. They've, they're familiar with one another. Now you gotta put the nerves out the window. One of two effort. Osagade collecting the rebound. Gun 18 and 6 overall. Pally 19 and 4. Two of the oldest schools in their area, both located in Palo Alto. And kickball resets the shot clock as Pally to inbound. 
That was Isabel Zhuang trying to use her right hand to get around the defender and work her way towards the wing, but it hits off the, the foot of the defender. Three attempt is missed. And a tie up in the paint. That'll be gun ball. That was Josie Butler as well as Majin Calda going at it right there underneath the bucket trying to get the ball. Some physical play being shown early here by both teams. Uh, low scoring this far, but a lot of action nonetheless. Thinks better of the three. This is the point guard for three. Rims out, chases down. Comes up with it. Open player. It's Manjin Calda. Manjin Calda trying to go baseline. Great outlet pass. Gun, plenty of time left on the shot. Under four minutes to go in the opening quarter. Titans trail 3-1 as shot clock down at six. Back iron. And again, some offensive rebounding. And our officiating crew saying that is pally ball. Our officiating crew today, Craig Goldberg, Clarence Robertson, and Tammy Yap. As Gun subs in number 34, Megan Mahoney, the six foot one, freshman forward. How about the, the hustle right there though, and that entire effort, that shot clock went down to nearly zero on both tries. You saw Claire Klossner really chasing after the ball. Everyone trying to really get around the action right here. Not getting the, the shots to fall. Several missed shots here early on in the first quarter. Allen going baseline. Turns it over. And that's Klossner at the right place at the right time. She's quick. I've watched her here early on, and she's all over the court. You'll see her definitely play on the outside. A long distance two from Majin Calda ties up this ball game. 3.15 left to go in the first quarter. Majin Calda had a great look right there. She set her feet. She needed that, and I really think Gunn needed that as a whole team to start their scoring drive as they tie it up. So the extended 1-2-2 zone by the Titans. Osagade with the ball, trying to challenge. Oh. And <laughs> the gun Titan player didn't look to have her feet set, but will benefit from the player control foul. Osagade is so powerful right there, approaching the bucket from the left side and stepping up and taking it was Catherine Perez as she falls backwards but you see her get up so stoked, so excited to draw the foul. Good passing in the early going from Gunn, really using the floor well, spreading out the offense and the defensive rebound by Butler. Nice pass. And that is going to be called on McHoney. First team foul, first personal for Gunn, and heading to the line to shoot two is Annie Susco, the five foot eight junior. Palo Alto, what a fall they had. The first public school in the history of the state of California to win both the state title in football and girls volleyball. So impressive, so impressive, especially when you think about all the different talent there is not throughout the state, throughout the counties. I mean, it's just a phenomenal show of athleticism by Palo Alto, it's amazing. Waiting to sub in for the shooters. Number 10, Charlotte Alapati, the five foot eight sophomore. Pally up by one, chance to make it two. They do. And you'll see Palo Alto getting all five players down the court quickly. They're not gonna show any type of press at this moment. They'll wait for the opposing offense and gun to come down the court and they'll set things up defensively. That's how they like to play. They like to wait and see how they're going to be approached. Mahoney, the freshman, that knocked out of bounds by Osagadi. And checking into the game for the first time for Gunn. Is a player whose number I do not have. We will get her name when we have the opportunity. Great move oh. in the paint, too strong from Majin Calda. And right there you get a chance to see Majin Calda. She starts out left side of the baseline, works her right hand up. She can't get it to fall, but it was a very strong effort. I guarantee we'll see more of that too here as this game progresses. 
coast to coast, but doesn't hit the rim. And Mahoney with the rebound. Less than two to go in the opening quarter. Gun trailing 5-3 to their SCVAL, Deans, a division rival. Three-point attempt from the big girl. Rips down and through. Perez with the big three. Gun out on top. Catherine Perez making it rain from the wing. Four points for her here in the first quarter. Perez, the leading scorer, shares the rebounding duties with Emily Redfield. Perez will play basketball at Seattle University next year. They'll be lucky to have her. Osagade is now gonna go one-on-one. -on -one. She'll give in the plays here. She's quick. She's big, but she is quick as well. She can drive to the lane. Look at the hustle right there. That should have been a foul. Nevertheless, it's Gunn's ball. Boy, and that was a big collision, too. You gotta give a lot of props of Magin Calde going up right there. It both really collided head on towards the, uh, the three-point line. Big collision. Last touch, Pally. And that was uh, Lindsey Black, who actually had a great defensive pressure, putting both hands up and forcing the ball really to go over the top instead it ricochets off towards the, uh, the end line. 20 on the shot. Minute seven left to play. And the close range bucket. By Majin Calda. Four points for Majin Calda. Her and Perez right now, the two scores. Allen taking things over. She scored the first bucket of the ball game. The three ball comes right back with the lay and back and forth we go. Pally trailing by one, 40 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Great drive by Allen on that last play. And picking up the foul will be Josie Butler reaching around. And just going back to Stephanie Allen's layup right there for two. I mean, she drove down the center of the key. She saw the lane. She didn't hesitate. And that's what I really found to be so great about that move. She just went right for the bucket, put her hand up, and was able to tack on another two points. She has five points here in the first quarter. Back iron into the hands of Butler. 24 seconds to work with in the first quarter. Butler wasting no time getting off a shot, gets her own rebound. Trying to find a guard to outlet to. She's looking for anybody. And that will send Osagade to the line with 12.8 seconds left, a chance to tie it up and take the lead. Osagade had three Titans around her as soon as she got the rebound. They closed in like a swarm of bees. She had two seconds less than that to put her hands up, get the ball, and then three white jerseys just closing in. That's how you do inside contained defense. Abby Strong, the five foot seven freshman wearing number five, checking in for the Vikings. And Sagani missed her first. Chance to tie it up with this attempt. She does. 8-8, eight, 12.8 eight, left for Gunn. Zwirling, the sophomore, the best three-point shooter on this gun squad, according to her head coach, handling the ball handler duties, that's way off. And with two tenths of a second remaining, and Kelly to inbound. Catherine Perez was looking for oh, anything right there. Oh, excuse me, correction, gun ball. It's gonna have to be a one touch. Catch and shoot. And the block. These two teams split the regular season play at a very competitive title game last year, and wouldn't you know, all tied up at eight after one quarter of play. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section, and you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFCentralCoast.tv. Click on Buy DVD, and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFCentralCoast.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFCentralCoast.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. 
Palo Alto, their head coach, Scott Peters, assisted by Chris Morris, Rio Koyama, Angela Gonzaga, Jick Quickstad, and Bill Schmarzo. Earl Hansen, the legendary football coach, is the AD of Palo Alto, one of the oldest schools in the state of California. And for the Gun Titans, Sarah Stapp is the head coach as well as the school's athletic director. She is assisted by Doug McAdam. Coach Stapp in her sixth year with Gunn. She's actually a 1992 graduate of Downey High School in Modesto. Pally to begin things off, trying to break this 8-8 tie as the second quarter is underway on Central Coast Section Network's coverage of the CCS High School Girls and Boys Basketball Championships. Lindsey Black is so quick. I'd like to see her take more of an approach to the bucket than try to be more conservative and feed the ball to the outside. She's so fast right there. Quick spin. Black. Iron gets her own rebound. Allen puts wow. up a prayer and it almost goes down, but <laughs> Perez there for the rebound. How'd she get that angle working? That was crazy. Falling back behind the end line, getting the ball underneath the board. An amazing try right there. That's called a nose for the bucket right there. Perez for three. The big girl, can she shoot, shoot it? Allen there to collect the long distance rebound. Minute gone, score stalled at eight. Thought Allen was gonna drive. Both Titans closed in on her. Fans starting to get into it. She'll set it up, she'll wait until she sees the right moment. Here's Black. Weak side rebound, tied up. Possession arrow favors Gunn. Henry M. Gunn High School, located on Arastadero Road. Titans have never won a CCS championship in girls basketball. Last year, they had to finish as the runner-up. And you know that's in the mind of every Gunn supporter, every parent, every athlete. This is a big moment for these Titans right here, and they want to capitalize on it. They have, this is their third time in four years in this championship game as Pally throws it away. 6.31 left to go in the half. Klausner to inbound, excuse me, Majin Calda to inbound for the Titans. And it appeared that that actually went off a Viking defender and you see uh, head coach Staff look over and she was begging to differ. Tied up, Pally Ball. Extended. Zone defense as Butler returns. Base, try and help break this full court pressure. And Josie Butler will be matched up against the other center, Megan Mahoney. That's gonna be a key matchup. Both players wearing number 34. Both players mere images of one another in terms of the height and size. Pally loses the handle a bit. Traveling oh. called. And if you're Josie Butler right there, give her all the credit in the world. A lot of effort when that ball went between her legs. She fell down. She was looking for any green jersey to pass the ball off to, but she got dinged for the traveling call. I like the effort that she, though, she was looking for somebody to continue the play. Good feed. Wide open. Rings down by Machon Calda. Gunn breaks the tie up 11-8 with a minute 10 seconds gone here in the second quarter. Majin Calda with seven points here in the first half, leading the Titans offense. Allen shot, excuse me, Osagati shot misses, but stays Pally Ball. Going back to that last three try, Majin Calda on the left side of the wing, sets her feet. Strokes it, a beautiful shot. And she'll be over double digits here if she keeps this up. As mentioned, the leading scorer so far for the Gun Titans. Number five into the game, Abby Strong. And that's gonna be Pally Ball again. So some cold shooting for the Vikings, but they keep earning additional opportunities as Perez returns and Swirling as well for Gun. Zoe Swirling's a key shooter for Gun. You see her locked up on Abby Strong, opposite side. No whistle, 
all just going in the direction of a Viking right now. Allen kicking out, nice wide pass. open. The rainbow doesn't hit. The weak side rebound, however, is there, and it's Black cleaning it up to pull her team within one. She was in the right spot, and, and luckily for Lindsey Black, no white jerseys around her. She had a pretty nice open shot and was able to kiss it off the rim for two. Pally fans asking for some defense. 10 to shoot for Gunn. Gives it up to Black. Black all alone, plenty of time to take her time. And the Vikings now out in front, 12-11, 4.45 left to go in the first half. Lindsey Black reaches in with her left hand, gets the strip, and then drives down the middle of the court quickly and completes the two-point play. Excellent job, both defensively and to finish. Swirling. Get it down low to Perez. The missed shot, and Allen doing a good job keeping her tippy-tippy toes from going out of bounds. How about Josie Butler right there, all over Perez with both hands? And so Pally put, having looks, putting up, but nothing falling for the moment as number 15, the five foot seven senior Sam Borsos checks into the lineup. A couple of Borsos on the squad. Their twin, her twin, Paige Borsos, also suited up tonight. And I'm keeping my eye on Josie Butler, her and Perez, the two bigs inside the key. And look, she went out and it opened up the lane. Allen losing control, and that's a backcourt back violation. Yeah, easy call, easy call right there. The official saw it and was right on top of it as soon as the ball crossed over the midline. Three fifty-two left to go in the half. Pally on defense, leading 12-11. And the way it's going right now, you figure last year's final score when Palo Alto defeated Gunn, 54-44. We're at 12-11. It's gonna take a lot more scoring opportunities for that score to appear. Gunn having all sorts of problems. Finally get the ball to Perez, who slid her. Pivot foot a little. Just a little bit too much. Timeout on the floor. Timeout taken by Palo Alto. 3.36 left to go in the half. The Vikings lead at 12-11. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcasts for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Kirsten Fairchild, Sean Hennessy on the Central Coast Section Network, courtside at the Levy Center, the home of the Santa Clara Broncos. However, yesterday and today, this site belongs to some of the best high school teams in Northern and Central California. Right now, the Palo Alto Vikings playing with the ball at 12-11 lead, 3.30 left to go in the half against their league rival, oh. the Gun Titans. I believe that went off the foot of Perez. Osagade tried to tr tried to really march along the inside line and work her way back to the middle, but it was great defensive pressure by the Titans, not allowing her to cut back in, really forcing her towards the edge. And that is going to be a walk. Gun cheering. Stand, cheering section likes it, likes the call. And Lindsey Black, if she would have managed to get that ball off, that would have impressed me enough trying to split three white jerseys right there, working her way in, but she did get called for the traveling. Almost a steal. Majin Calda in a volleyball roll. How many players have we seen hit the floor hard today? And it's it's crazy too because it's not it's it's not just you know by the end line. We're talking mid court. We're talking three point line. 
Excellent inbound play. Puts Gunn back out on top with a one-point advantage. Just under three to go in the first half. That's six points now for Catherine Perez. Oh, nearly had a great steal right there by uh, Zwirling. Keeping her eye on the ball, almost had that one. Two cross-court passes by the Vikings. This is a free ball. Here comes Klausner trying to run the fast break with Zwirling. Get it to Perez. Perez on the left side for the easy bucket. 15-12, gun, 2.20 left to go in the half. Black's gonna try to respond a quick transition. Perez with the block. Excuse me, that block might have been by Mahoney. The two bigs, the twin towers in for gun. Josie Butler wide open, left wing. And you see Black shift her over towards the three line. Six to shoot, five to shoot. Into the hands of Perez. So Pally has gone cold just four points in this second quarter. Minute 45 left to go before the break. Nice drive. Swirling, taking it in the paint. Swirling, oh. making it look oh so easy. Gun on top by five. Oh my goodness, picture perfect drive right there. Zoe Swirling making it look easy to the bucket. Head coach Scott Peters calls a timeout. Pally trailing 17-12, minute 28 left to go in the first half. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage of the State Regional Basketball Championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the Regional Basketball Championships, four venues of coverage around the state. Then the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, it's the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all on KBCSports.com, your home for high school sports. Alongside Sean Hennessy, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. So glad to have you with us. Thanks for tuning in to the Central Coast Section Network. One final game after this one, the nightcap between Bellarmine and Piedmont Hills for the D1 boys title. Big thanks to everyone at the Central Coast Section for making us feel so hospitable as well as the crew here at Santa Clara University. A special shout out to the CCS Commissioner Nancy Lazenby Blazer, as well as Ray Mialovich and Steve Filios that have made sure we're properly hydrated. Absolutely. Getting our players as soon as we can after the game, getting our stats, really making us feel at home here. A big thanks to all of them. Commissioner Nancy, first one to shake my hand when I walked in. Much kudos, uh, much obliged. This venue, this setting, picture perfect for the CCS championship. First class all the way, staff, people, and facility. Minute 12 left to go in the half, Palo Alto. Trailing 17 to 12, long distance two. The rainbow has a pot of gold. That was Butler, Josie Butler. I love the matchup. She had no one around her from about 12 feet out, decides to take the nice jumper, had a good arc on that one. Drills it for two. Klausner, back iron. Positioned by Mahoney, and Mahoney will get herself to the line. 40 seconds remaining in the half. Gunn looking to extend its 17-14 lead. Allen. Yeah, Stephanie uh, Allen a little first bit frustrated personal. right there. You, you saw it too when she reached in. She was the first one to walk away as soon as the foul was blown. Missed free throw. That was the sixth team foul on Palo Alto as Black returns. So you see Lindsey Black step in, and right away, Coach Peters comes over and sits down with Allen and says, hey, look, you gotta calm down, you have to relax. You can see it right now, a little bit frustrated. Last touch on Pally after the 0-2 effort from the charity stripe. Klausner. 
33 on game clock, 24 on shot clock, and Perez with the left hand from the left side. She can camp out at that left post all oh, yeah. day long and get it done. Oh yeah, Perez now with six points here in the second quarter, just like you said, and she's underneath the bucket, that left side. It's her favorite spot in the whole court. Through the hands, Pally, wild pass. 18 seconds left for Gunn, up by five on their DNs, a division rival. So if you're the Titans here, if you're Gunn, you want to end this first half strong. Six seconds. Down to four, three, two, Zwirling can't get it off. The foul, now Zwirling was shooting. Let's see if any time gets put back on. Nope, they're not gonna put more time back on, but Zoe Zwirling, best three-point shooter on the squad. We'll see what she can do from the stripe. She'll be shooting two. And if uh, you see the officials indicate all girls over to the side as Zwirling hits her first because time expired. Great effort by Zwirling to make it a seven point gap. Remember there was a tie after the first gun responds, outscoring Pally 13 to six in that second quarter, a 21-14 lead. Sean, what did you like about what Gunn did in the second quarter? Well, when you take a look at Gunn, I, it's got to go back to Catherine Perez, one of the big players. She had six strong points in that second quarter. She had four in the first. She leads the team with 10 overall points. And the other big matchup, we look at with Gunn, Emily Redfield, number 33, going up against her big opponent, 34, Josie Butler. Those are the matchups that I'm really looking forward to because right now when Catherine Perez, she's underneath the bucket, guess who's there? It's Josie Butler to meet her. That's going to be the most interesting and entertaining matchup to watch here during the second half. Central Coast Section Network will return with coverage of the CCS Girls D1 title game, a rematch of last year. Gunn had to settle for finalist status last year. Can they come away with the first ever title in girls basketball in the history of the school? Find out. We'll be back with second half action in just a moment. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run us to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just <laughs> Holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two, get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20 yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the and sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. 
Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh! slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10, the five. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center in their tight wing formation. Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown Imperial on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40-yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20-yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64-yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons Running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21 17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi then tap over in two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon 
That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out there. Clock will tick down the players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to 6 is your score. And he looks. Pally came out of the locker room to a huge round of applause from its crowd. The Vikings still trying to get things going. Gun up 21 14 at the break. Kirsten Fairchild, Sean Hennessy, Central Coast Section TV. What did the stats tell us, Sean, in the first half? Well, I tell you what, Catherine Perez was the leading scorer for both teams. 10 points she was able to put up. She had four big rebounds. So she was the number one player that really stood out if you take a look at the statistics. On the flip side, Lindsey Black with four points. And then how about Stephanie Allen for Palo Alto? She had five as well. But the big number for Palo Alto, 10 turnovers, and that's why they trail by seven. What a move and dish by Perez as Gunn started things off in the second half. But come up empty. Usagade bringing it down, wow. and a big three from Annie Susco, the five foot eight junior. Annie Susco, she had two points in the first. How about the look on the wing? The faith to take the shot right there. Five points now for Susco. Usagade with the steal, one to beat. Lays in, falls it down, misses. And that deflected out of bounds. It's going to be Pally Ball. She had that ball knocked away at the last second. That was Redfield who put her hand in there and batted the ball down. But how about Palo Alto? Kirsten coming out from the gates, just storming. They that plan looks so drawn up. Yeah. And another three on the way. Hey, if the Vikings are going to start hitting threes, they're going to close that gap in a hurry. Exactly what they've done. A minute gone. It's only a one-point advantage for Gunn with the ball. Lindsay Black from the top of the key behind the three-point line, and she drills it. She now has seven points. Credit the defense forcing Klausner to lose her composure. She's going to need to look for help. How about that? A seven-point differential going into half and Palo Alto coming out of the gates. They've now closed it to one. Baseball throw. Hey, this is the only place they haven't hit a three from. Instead, Allen going baseline, and she heads to the line. Boy, did the oh. Pally Root section get here at the break, or yeah. were they kept quiet in the first half? There was nothing to root about. They were occupied. I see a lot of the uh, delicious nachos and different food items coming from the cafeteria, but they are alive right now. Going back to that last play, Catherine Perez. She couldn't believe the foul was called on her. She had her hand right on top of the ball. We're all tied up at 21. The junior, Stephanie Allen, a chance to put the Vikings on top, misses. But they're Another to the three, way off, but no, the putback. How awful for Butler, and that should be a walk. You hit it. You hit the nail on the head right there. Great effort by Stephanie Allen, trying to get up and do something with it, but she moved her feet. This is a brand new Viking squad. I don't know what the coaching staff had to say to them at the break, but has lit a fire oh, yeah. under the defending sectional champion. And you look down on the court, uh, head coach Scott Peters just glaring in. He's fired up, whole team's fired up. Perez as she has done so well, her 11th and 12th point. Six minutes to go in the third. Gun back out in front, 23-21. Or excuse me, still out in front. And Allen just is hitting the floor left and right and continuing to earn herself a trip to the line. Perez will get dinged right there at the foul, her second personal. But she has been the standout player. Once again, she's looking up like, that was me? I got the whistle? 
Unfortunately for her, yes. I'm sure that's by design going at Perez. Gunn's going to call a 30-second timeout. 6.01 left to go in the third. Allen will have another to shoot, an opportunity to try and tie up this game. Gunn leads at 23-22. Catch the best of Central Coast section basketball on CIFCentralCoast.tv. You can watch a replay of today's games after each one concludes. Plus, check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for high school sports, CIFCentralCoast.tv. Alongside Sean Hennessy, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. The Levy Center beginning to fill up. I think within the next half hour, it will be close to capacity. Girls D1 title game followed by the boys. Two of two effort from Allen ties up this ball game at 23. Allen, eight points. Stephanie Allen, the speedster, drilling another. Swirling, taking it into the lane. Great opportunity and coming back down with it. Swirling. That foul on the floor, the first for Pally here in the second half. Like the hustle from Zwirling, coming back up underneath the backboard, circling towards the key to see if she can get one last shot off, coming up and really getting her own rebound. Allen's second personal gun, trying to match the intensity and make that her third personal. Allen asking to come out of the game. Yeah. And, and replacing her is number five, Abby Strong, the freshman. As soon as Allen committed that foul, you saw her put her hand up, signal over to Coach Peters, I need to come out, and sure enough, Abby Strong was making her way over towards the center. 5.35 left to go in the third. All tied up at 23 from the right elbow, short. That's oh. Pally Ball. Yeah, Perez, she stuck her hand out. She thought she was gonna have enough time to bring it back in, and it went right off her fingertips. A great opportunity here for Palo Alto to capitalize since they have managed to come back and tie this up. Remember, they trail by seven at the half. Usagade. Over to Susco. Back and forth, they play catch. Now that Allen is on the bench. 10 to shoot. Strong trying to go baseline and Perez can't. Five to shoot. Pally Bench needs to let him know what's going on. How about the defense? Turning it over, the stingy defensive stand by Gunn, but then they give it up. Black. Osagade. Yeah. Pally. 25-23, 4.45 left to go in the third. The fans are loving it. It took a while. There was a lot going on right there. It was a lot of defense, a lot of strip balls, a lot of chasing after the ball when it was low on the ground. And right there, Osagade came up clutch and managed to pick up her third point in the ball game. Swirling. Good Swirling move. with the left hand. Swirling taking over the point guard duties, tying this game up at 25, 415 left to go in the third. I tell you what, Zoe Swirling has made some incredible moves, some incredible drives to the lane. That right there, oh my goodness, the speed that she takes into the approach, hard to stop. Number 10, Charlotte Alapate, the five foot eight sophomore, returns to the lineup. And Mahoney back in as well. You know, Pally's doing a great job driving the lane for the layup, but then they're too strong with their effort. I'd like to see a little more touch, and the Vikings would be out in front probably by six or eight. Watch Lindsey Black right here. She's going to set up inside. She's going to try to get around Perez. I look for her to take a key shot. Yep. Throws it toward her coaching staff. Turning it over. And Abby Strong was in the neighborhood. Both Strong and Black were on the right side of the wing as they tried to feed the ball over towards the right side to get something started offensively, but they turn it over. Gun seven point lead at the break. Gone after Pally came out on fire at the start of this quarter. Swirling, who's had the hot hand. 15 to shoot, 340 left to go in the third. Swirling. Really a, trying to create. That was a great matchup right there. 
you had Lindsay Black and Zoe Zwirling matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Zwirling, Zwirling, she saw a lane. She started to approach it from the left side of the key and was able to pick up the foul. Second personal on Black as Allen ready to check in. That's the third Pally team foul. 3.30 left to go, Zwirling. It's really been the only consistent offensive threat here in the third quarter. Zwirling going baseline, hits the side of the backboard. Osagade. Great, fast break. Can you believe it doesn't fall from Butler? Unfair. Josie Butler can't believe it. That's what it. I'm talking about, a little too strong. They get the position on the land. They had a two-on-one. It was a nice two-on-one opportunity, Kirsten. They couldn't finish, and that's actually the second time we've seen that roll on the rim. That was so lucky that came into Gunn's hand as Swirling, way off the mark, hit a pally player in the leg with that pass. And here comes Allen playing with three fouls. Yeah, Abby Strong got hit with the foul right there. So Stephanie Allen's gonna come back in and she's the spark plug. She's got a lot of energy. She was a little bit frustrated when she picked up her third earlier on in the ball game. But look how quick she is. She's not gonna let anything come her way for the inbound. Musagade knocks it out. And they've matched up Stephanie Allen on Claire Klossner. Another interesting matchup to watch. Klossner held scoreless throughout this ball game. Perez, an air ball. She was left unattended. I guess they're gonna make her prove she can shoot from outside, but didn't she hit a three earlier today? She did. It was a little bit awkward to see her come up that short. I, I think she just didn't set her feet properly, and as soon as she backpedaled towards midcourt, she tapped her chest, indicating, hey, my bad, my fault. Let's go back on D. Number 25, Nora Shevik, the five foot nine junior guard checks in. Shevik, a 4.0 GPA on a team with plenty of players that have 4.0 GPAs. Academics not a problem for this gun squad. Pass down low, block from behind by Perez. Surprise, surprise, Perez able to swat it away. And Allen, does she pick up her fourth? Oh, this is huge. No, instead that foul given to Alapate as Vikings fans breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, if, if you could imagine if Stephanie Allen picked up her fourth right there, gasps would have been heard from this entire arena. <laughs> Except maybe the gun side. Except the gun side, of course. 2.30 left to go in the third, all knotted up at 25. Look at the double team pressure. Here comes Palo Alto. Green jerseys all over the place. Plenty of time for the Vikings. Imagine Calda nails it, 28-25 after the tray. A three-pointer, stack it up for Imagine Calda. Allen gives it up to Majin Calda, who just gets her pocket picked by Allen. It's a little wild and woolly right now. Three turnovers in a matter of 10 seconds. That's gotta be offensive, no! Yeah, I mean, she was so out of control. And thank goodness for Pally fans, Allen didn't pick up her fourth. I guess Perez didn't have her feet set. That's her third personal and third gun team foul. Yeah, they, and someone, people in this audience would argue that call could have gone either way right there. Stephanie Allen falling forward as she was trying to drive to the bucket right there. She's got eight points so far in this matchup, and she'll have a chance to make it 10 as she hits her ninth. Guns number 33, Redfield returns. Susco and Black in the backcourt for Pally. 10 points now, Stephanie Allen. Pally within one, Gunn with the lead, a one point advantage, minute 50 to go in the third. This second half, the quality of play has picked up tremendously. Oh yeah, you're seeing a, a tougher defense, but you're seeing some great shots. You're seeing some great shots by these girls. Look at this defense from Pally, but great look. And the block by Danielle Palmer wearing number 24, the six foot sophomore making her presence known. And she just has a very similar build to Josie Butler, but Danielle Palmer right there coming in and swatting it away. A beautiful defensive play and she's, she's hyped up right now. Mahoney and Palmer, the youngsters, underclassmen, battling, swirling with the right hand. 
And that is jump ball as the shot clock expires. So this will be interesting. There's no time on the shot clock and it stays Gunn's ball. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, and, and you look over at the gun sideline and you see Coach Sarah Stapp indicating you need to reset, you need to reset the shot clock. They're gonna reset. Yeah, there it is. And, she and Pally coach Scott Peterson, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, he's looking over like, wait a second. Oh my gosh, so we were, oh man, Mahoney. And Allen, there is a lot of body contact away from the ball before the bigs. And that foul on Mahoney. That's a good call right there. Yeah, that was Megan Mahoney literally falling towards the face of Stephanie Allen's scary moment. It was inside the key. And uh, you know, it's just a different size matchup right there, but you see Mahoney just falling on Allen, and the first thing she goes for was her lip, her lower, her, her face. It was a scary fall. Saganay returns for Palo Alto. Minute 26, Pally trailing 28-27. This is the rubber match between these two teams, and emotions are running high. Oh, man, it, it, the way it's going right now, both these teams have one win on each other. The rubber match. 28-27 gun, this could come down to the wire. Allen, one touch with the three, looked like it was going in, it does not. Black there to collect. Now they're gonna slow it down again. Lindsey Black on the left side, keep your eye on her. Playing See her. Shevick getting yep. her paw on it. Allen going baseline, steps out of bounds. Allen hitting the floor again. Stephanie Allen, I like what she was trying to do right there, balance along the end line. She just managed to put her foot on the red because she had Lindsey Black wide open for the pass. Black couldn't even believe the ball was coming at her, hit her perfectly in the chest, but went out of bounds first. Klausner, excuse me, Madgen Calda for the layup from the right side. 30 to 27, gun leads, 32 seconds remaining. Four second differential between game and shot clock. Majin called a 10 points All now. All day long, however, the miss from Black, she sure had time. Yeah, she did have a lot of time right there to take the shot as it rolled out of bounds. 22 game, 19 shot, Pally. Chance to tie it. They can convert a three point play. You see Allen, she's looking to her right side. Five on the shot, seven on the game clock, and that is a blocking foul, and that did not look comfortable for Majin Calda, oh, for Yowza. Didn't look comfortable, didn't sound comfortable for Majin Calda. Big old clunk. Oh my goodness, hit the floor hard, and, and it just echoes throughout the Santa Clara University Arena, the Levy Center, my goodness, it echoes all the way up. Black pulls within two as Pally goes for the sub. Sam Borso's number 15 comes in as well as Alapati wearing number 10. To a two effort, it's a one point ball game. Six seconds, six seconds left. Swirling can certainly go coast to coast in six seconds. Gets it off. No call. For the travel. I was looking for it. I think you were looking for it. There was a lot of people looking for the call. But Pally outscores Gunn by six points in the third quarter. However, the Titans up 30 to 29 and one quarter away from winning the school's first ever CCS championship title in girls basketball. Catch the best of Central Coast section basketball on CIFCentralCoast.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes, plus check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for high school sports, CIFCentralCoast.tv. Kirsten Fairchild, Sean Hennessy at the Levy Center. Santa Clara University. The girls D1 final. Pally, a whole different kind of club after that 
locker room talk at the half by Coach Scott Peters. I would have loved to have been in that locker room and listened to what Coach Peters told his girls because you they might have came been the out. only person that liked being in that locker they, room. They came out totally 300, total 1080. I mean, they came out here and just turned up the Jets. They had ball movement going around. Their defensive press was phenomenal. They were down by seven. At this point, they trailed by one. They managed to come back and tie it. It's a totally different feeling here for Palo Alto. The fans were getting into it. And I tell you what, the key player to watch down the stretch, she's got a lot of fouls, but it's Stephanie Allen. Stephanie sure. Allen is the go-to player for Palo Alto. And on the flip side, you take a look at Gunn, you got to keep your eyes on Catherine Perez. They got to get her more involved. Uh, Zwirling did a nice job as Gunn ready to start things off here on the fourth with a 30-29 lead, but they lost Perez a little. Mismatch here with Allen on Perez. Klausner. Great defense. Oh, my. The steal by Pally. Klausner takes it right back. Klausner, one on two, she doesn't care, and will head to the line to shoot two. Gun fans love it, Klausner, love the effort. She didn't mind at all, she didn't care. She saw two green jerseys to her right, and she approached it like, hey, I'm taking this shot. What's the worst that can happen? We can get the foul. Now she's gonna head to the line. It's gonna give her an opportunity to make this possibly a three-point advantage for Gun. Zwirling currently seated on the bench. She did a great job in the third quarter for Gun. Missed first three through. Klossner actually looking for her first points in the ball game. And she'd like to come up big right here. No love from the Santa Clara Rims and Perez saying, hey, I didn't fall out of bounds on my own volition. I'm not sure if she said volition, but Nevertheless, the Vikings with the momentum. But she gave it a ton of effort right there, coming up with that rebound. She tried her best to balance that in line and keep it in play. Girl shows a lot of effort. Mahoney with the takeaway, and boy, Mahoney has been involved in some scrapes. And Pally's number 24, Danielle Palmer, going down hard. That's one and one now. And Mahoney, six foot one freshman, doing battle with Palmer, the six foot sophomore. They got, they got a few years to work this out between the two of them. Oh my goodness, I can't wait for the future matchups. Daniel <laughs> Palmer coming in there and just squeezing on for life to the basketball, not giving up at all the sophomores, making an impact right here. This is fun stuff. Mahoney making a two point game. Perez coming over, the senior to the freshman. Encouraging Pat. Yeah, let's keep that going. Mahoney picks up her first point. Three-point ball game. Good for her. Two for two effort. 7.27 left to go. Osagade to bring it up. Osage. Being met by two Titans. Pally needs a few more threes the way they start off the third quarter. That's a double dribble, a mental mistake made by Susco. And you glance over the top side on the opposite wing, Lindsey Black, Black stomping her feet, waving, hey, I'm open, you're being double teamed. Throw the ball over my direction. Instead, what happens, it's another turnover. I mean, in the first half, Palo Alto committed 10 big turnovers. You gotta wonder if that's something that's gonna possibly show up to haunt them here as this game windles down. Sesco replaced by Strong in the lineup for Pally. Baseline open. Shot does not fall. Pally tries to save it. They're going to say Gunn's going to have a shot here. Perez is going to give the inbound. Keep your eye on 25, Nora Shevik. She's moving around, and Allen's playing her loosely. Pally on defense. Wanted to walk. Shevik, bounce pass, down low to Perez. Perez gets oh. blocked, but Gunn earns another opportunity. 10 on the shot clock. Palmer with another block. Bench counting him down. Perez to Mahoney. Mahoney not quite ready with a soft hand. 6.32 left to go in the ball game. Pally trailing by three, swirling 
returns as well as Majin Calda for Gunn. And Pally calls a timeout. Timeout on the floor. Vikings will have three left. So will the Titans. It's a game. Need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting videos for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at info, or I beg your pardon, recruits at kbcsports.com. Or give us a call at 619-677-3246. Rematch of last year's championship, won by Palo Alto, 54-44. Much lower scoring game at this point. The Vikings trailing 32-29. They're the three seed. They beat Wilcox, the two seed. Gun, the top seed. Okay. Mahoney's just all over Black. And she's picking up the fouls. And I'm glad you mentioned that too. Palo Alto, the three seed. You look at a lot of these tournaments here for the CCS championship games. This is one of the few matchups where you get that one versus Just three. Two, yeah. So it's exciting to see Palo Alto in here representing those three seeds. A great job by the selection committee once again putting these numbers together for these squads. And another mental mistake. We had the double dribble, and now we've got the dribbling violation by Black, who was not even being challenged. Gunn beat Santa Teresa 52-40 in the semifinal. And again, Palo Alto knocking off Wilcox. Right now, team's got to clean it up. 6.15 to go. Perez, you'd like to see her get a few more looks. And Coach Peters for Palo Alto just absolutely furious after that turnover, looking at his bench and saying, we cannot do that. Zwirling back in, misses with the left hand. Palo Alto, that's a walk, no call. Letting them play here in the fourth quarter. Several several calls, I'm right there with you, that possibly could have gone in the direction. Slow down. Both these teams right now just trying anything they can to get that ball close to the glass. And going back to what you're saying, they just need to pace it right now. This game is too close to just speed up and just go right towards the rim. You, you've got to set up the offense and give it some time. And you can't be shooting yourself in the foot when you're behind. Yeah. That's going to upset gun fans. Obviously, Klausner feels she would had the ball deflected for her to be moving backwards. Coach Stapp noticed it. She walked right over to the official and indicated, hey, that was a tip. You can't give her the call on that. But instead, Palo Alto is going to get an opportunity that they cannot afford to turn it over. They've got to play some great basketball here. Three's not falling and swirling. And look on the other side of the floor. And Perez upset. Boy, uh, you, got, you can't follow the ball here there's so much action so much physical play going on away from the ball that's exactly what happened whistle blows Perez pointing at Allen who's laying on the floor Allen to shoot one and one is this the break the Vikings need and not only that a lot of action taking place at center court you figure the ball is being taken down towards the three-point line and you've got players falling down you have balls that are being stripped that's Missed the opportunity is. there. Five and change to go. Gun leading. Score stall 32-29. Pally has not scored in this quarter. Gun has managed just two. More players. Another turnover. That time Gun. Allen. Prescott has to keep her feet set. No whistle. Here comes Whirling. Swirling's got to look for Majin Calda. I don't know what that's all about. Back and forth they go. And good D. Klausner just says, yeah, go for it. And Sagade makes the bucket. It's a one-point game. And Sarah Stab says, that is enough. Calls a timeout. 
4.34 left to go. Guns lead clipped to one. Stay tuned for the CIF Central Coast.tv postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIF Central Coast.tv. Palo Alto, the Vikings. Earlier I said that the first public school to win both state titles in girls volleyball and football that was actually done in 2010 although the pally girls defended their volleyball title in 11. to the gun side of the floor sarah stabbed the head coach she was a shooting guard at sacramento state and then stuck around and assisted for years and right now she is having a word with a member of our officiating crew very animated but you gotta love that from a player perspective you see your coach getting into it she's still discussing some different i items. think it's that backcourt violation yeah, yeah and she she's wondering and you see her hand signaling over under how could you call that on us that ball was tipped that's what she's trying to relay to the officials but just going back to the player perspective, you get fired up when you see your coach sticking up for you. I tell you, I saw a CCS boys game, Piedmont Hills, San Lorenzo Valley. That same call cost a trip to the finals. Came down to that one call, and what a move, swirling. Jukes black right there, and the fans go crazy for gun. Four and change. Gun with a one point lead, 10 to shoot. Nice pass. Imagine Calda gets stripped by Black. Six on the shot clock for Gun. I say an inbound, I'm drawing up an inbound play for Perez to get it. Going back to that last try, Imagine Calda had a great look at the free throw, but instead she chose to drive towards the bucket. Almost wanted to see her pull up and take that jump shot. There's only five on the shot clock. Here comes Imagine Calda. Imagine Calda before the buzzer expires. Gone back out by three. Does Pally have an answer? Black all sorts of time. Everything but in. Put back is short. Klausner brings it down. The volume has increased here in the Levy Center. Boy, big rebound by Claire Klausner. She stomped her feet when she got that one. This is a huge possession right here for Gunn. Let's see if they can capitalize on the big rebound. 3.33, 10 to shoot for Gunn, up by three. Oh. Perez can't hold on to it. Oh. Well, they'll say she'll gun to inbound. Mahoney to check in. Both teams with seven fouls in the bonus. 3.23 left to go, Perez now will inbound. So Perez is gonna give the inbound. Keep your eye on Zwirling playing outside. Again, away from the ball. I mean, boy, Majin Kolda, another volleyball roll. She got stuck in it. And that, that is the third personal on black, 18 fouls. So forget the inbound play. Majin Kolda, 4.0 student, misses her first. Swirling has to call a timeout. Instead, she gets tied up. Vikings take over. 319 left to go. Again, just two points for Pally in this quarter. Four for Gunn. Lindsey Black being double teamed now, but she's got Butler across the wing. There she is. Weak side rebound by Perez. Unable to convert right Pally there. Pally went cold. Unable to get it down low for a closer range. Perez challenging. Mahoney loses it. Loose ball. Nicely done. Great job, Palo Alto defense. Usagade. Wide open, they needed it! And Strong delivers, we're all tied up at 34, 2.30 left to play. Strong gets a big hug from Allen. 
No better time to get your first points in the ball game than late in the fourth quarter to tie it up. Mahoney doesn't go for the open looks. Zwirling, bounce pass into Mahoney. Mahoney, short, gets her own rebound. Can't fall, Perez will get hacked and head to the line to shoot two. That is a huge foul. It's gonna go against Osaga Day, and she has her hands on her knees, a little bit tired right there. Both girls going back and forth for the rebound. You see the bigs in there, Josie Butler. You see Osaga Day trying to get in and get that rebound. Your money maker is at the line, Perez. No question about it, gives her team a one point lead. That was the second personal on Osaga Day. Ninth team foul. That's now 14 points for Catherine Perez. Gunn calls a timeout, up 36-34. 2.09 left to play. Both coaches need to draw it up right here. How very exciting for two schools two programs that know each other so very well. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier on in the broadcast, the rubber matchup, both teams going one and one, both teams being able to get a victory against one another. You look up at the scoreboard, you've got two points separating these two squads. Palo Alto, victorious last year, 54-44. It's a little more of a defensive style matchup in this game. The crowd is into it now. You can feel this place absolutely erupting every chance there is for a basket to go in. It, it's The energy level at this point is just sky high. And the effort here in the second half by both teams, both coaches have to be happy with. Few more errors by Palo Alto, however. And how about Abby Strong hitting that big three-pointer in the so corner? Huge. Oh my goodness, and, and you know she's been waiting for that the, the entire game. She's been running around, providing some good defensive press, and then right there at the corner, she takes the look and drills it. You saw Palo Alto just go absolutely nuts. It was yeah. a big, big moment. Yeah, well, you love when players off the bench come off and contribute like that, especially to tie up a ball game. Absolutely. 2.09 left. It's all on the line. It's all come down to this. Pally looking to defend its title. Gun hoping to bring back the first ever championship banner to hang in their gymnasium. That reads girls basketball. Defense playing back for Gun. They're going to let Palo Alto bring it and try to double team. Allen yep. all alone. Off the mark, but Black is there. Klausner all over Black. Time out called by Pally. They will have two. Gun has just one. Minute 49 left to go. The Vikings drawing it up, trailing by two. Stay tuned for the CIF Central Coast.tv postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIF Central Coast.tv. Alongside Sean Hennessy, I'm Kirsten Fairchilds. Our crew today is John Boucher, our engineer and production manager is Brian Carter. Again, a big thanks to everyone at Santa Clara University and the Central Coast section for making us feel so hospitable. One more game to go after this one, the nightcap D1 final between Bellarmine and Piedmont Hills. Game time scheduled for 8 p.m. Minute 49 left in regulation for this one. The co-champs, along with Wilcox in the De Anza Division at the SCVAL, trying to clean up, clear up which team is better. Allen, a long distance two, huge, tying it up at 36. And now Palo That was Alto. not a three. Palo Coach Alto. Peters wanted a three, her foot was on the line. They've got to get back on defense here as the clock now hits under one minute, 30 seconds. Perez put it up. She has not taken a lot of shots here in the second half. Mahoney to Perez. Perez with the adjustment for the bucket. Minute 11 left, gun back out front by two. Allen to Osagade and Pally burns another timeout. Both teams will have a full apiece. Exactly one minute left. How clutch is Allen? But then Perez gets herself into her favorite 
spot on the floor to deliver for Gunn. And that's where she's most effective. That's where she's gathered 90% of her points in this particular matchup is right underneath the rim. And she saw the opportunity and she took it right there. And now they lead by two again. Gunn needs to hold on to this. And if you're Coach Peters right now, sitting down in front of your girls, you're looking him in the eye. He's so animated. He's so excited. They've got a chance right here with the way that this clock is going to wind down to possibly tie it up, maybe take the lead with just a few seconds to spare. I have to say it, Sean. It's the clash of the Titans. Oh, my goodness. And the Vikings. <laughs> It doesn't get any better than that. The Titans up 38-36. The third member of our broadcast crew, Casey Jackson, forming with his hands the letters O-T. It would be the first overtime game thus far in the CCS title games, but Pally's got to come through right here. And I tell you what, I, this arena has never been louder throughout this entire playoff. And right now, the, the girls division one CCS basketball championship. This place is going crazy. Absolutely. Gun on defense. One, two, two zone. Pally trying to find some magic, tie it up, take the lead, whatever. They'd be happy with what they can get. And Perez pulls it down. Off to Zwirling. Klausner, 40 seconds remaining. And they need to get up court here. And there's the foul. And that foul on Black. That will send Gunn to the line. That is the 10th team foul. So shooting two. Imagine called a. Pally calling his players over. Gunn not certain what's going on. That must be the fifth. Is that the fifth on Allen? Well, Coach Peters is talking to his staff as if a timeout had been called. You see the official walk over to him. And, then yeah. and they're going to get both teams back. No, out. that is the fifth on Black. So Black, what a game she's had. We'll have to watch this one from the bench the rest of the way. Majin called it to shoot two, 34 seconds remaining. Gunn looking to extend its lead. Majin called it the senior chance missing. Mm. This will make it, if it goes through a one possession game, Gunn with an opportunity, of course, to collect the rebound, but Pally liking that miss. It's a three point ball game with 34 seconds remaining. We know the Vikings can hit the three. They have also been able to work their way to the foul line. Stephanie Allen, right side. Wide open. Hits the front rim. Allen gets blocked by Perez. 19 seconds remaining and a foul called. Gunn shouldn't celebrate too soon. 19 seconds remaining. We saw the three attempt by Butler. Misses, and a foul. And who comes up and blocks Allen's shot? Catherine Perez. We saw them going at it earlier in the game. She comes up big again. Gunn could have iced this in some ways. And Pally's going to go ahead and ice Klausner. 19 seconds remaining. Pally burns their final time out. Gun up 39-36. It's going to come down to Claire Klausner, the junior. She needs to make this free throw for Gun to celebrate. Absolutely. She needs to make this one right here to make it 40-36. You're talking about a two-score differential. Palo Alto right now, you're looking at the girls' faces. You see a lot of arms crossed. You see some frowns that, that they cannot get down at this particular point in the ball game. You need to keep your heads up. Right now, you're looking down at Scott Peters. He's drawing out the possibility of getting a rebound. He's drawing out the possibility of inbounding the ball quickly and moving it down the court. That's what's going through his mind right now. On the flip side, you're taking a look at Coach Sarah Stapp. She's telling her players, we are this close. We are this close to capitalizing and coming out of here with a title. We need to play solid and fundamental basketball. You're watching Central Coast Section Network's coverage of the CCS High School Girls and Boys Basketball Championships. Gun huddled up. 
The five on the floor fired up. Pally coming out of the timeout. Klausner, the weight of the world on her shoulders right now, missed her first free throw attempt. Chance to make it a four point game with 19 seconds remaining. Misses again. Usagade with the rebound, 15 seconds to work with. Wide open is Alapati, misses. Perez gets fouled and will head to the line. So both times, two different players. The Vikings have gone to that spot on the left wing. Wide open, way off the mark. And I don't think Charlotte Alapati was the person that should have taken that shot right there. You, you look down on the court, you had Allen outside the key, you had Osagade lining up inside. It seemed like that shot was rushed and it killed a lot of time. You're now stuck with eight seconds left and a chance for Gunn to really open it up. Perez has been money from the foul line. It's a four point game with 8.3. She can't contain her emotion here. What a way to go out as a senior, knowing you helped earn the first ever CCS title. And it goes down, five point differential. Eight seconds remaining, Osagade. For three, nails it. Time expires. Osagade drains the three like it's nothing, but it is a little too little, too late. Gun High School, the first CCS title in girls basketball in the history of the school. An entertaining, nail-biting thrill of a win, 41-39 over their league rival, the defending champions who did not defend today, the Palo Alto Vikings. And what a way for Gun to come back, step up. They had that seven point lead in the first half. Palo Alto started to close in the third. You look across the court, you see Catherine Perez jumping up and down into her, into her fans. This is such a monumental moment for the Gun Titans. Congrats to their head coach, Sarah Stapp, also the AD in her sixth year and the coaching staff, big hugs all around. Gun led. The first quarter was an 8-8 tie, but Gunn led the rest of the way, and although their lead was tenuous and sometimes just one point, Pally could rarely get over the hump. You take a look at last year's matchup. Palo Alto knocked off Gunn 54-44. That stuck in the minds of all these girls. All these girls thought about that, and they come into this matchup and they return the favor. They're able to come back and capture the title. It was such such electricity going through the air here in that fourth quarter. What an amazing way to finish this game. Two teams from Palo Alto won the winner. That is the Gun Titans, 41-39 over the Palo Alto Vikings, our Central Coast Section Network player of the game when we return to the Levy Center on the campus of Santa Clara University. Fourth and 10 from the 41-yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass, looking left, Firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs. And Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down two nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's the, over, the, over the net call. Oh my goodness! Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15 9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2 0 down match wise and take it three games to two. 36 35 and driving, and oh baby! 
Wrigley with the jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. <laughs> Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. <laughs> I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man Ooh. a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a the handoff to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way, as he's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines and he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap play action to Campbell looks down the field now here comes the pressure he's going to be hit he breaks the tackle rolls left now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown, Foothill. Like you said earlier, 6-2 body framing can probably in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last minute. Buller trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that, on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun has time to throw, and he'll fire, and he has a man diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch by he laid himself wow. out there, and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely, did Lewis, and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outskirts of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. No he doubt. might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney who makes the catch. Stiffs arms of Fender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45 yard line. Flags flying later to go play. for it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up. Receive a far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Waba. Waba back there. 
Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's underthrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga. Was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by by one of the Falcons, and then Moliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch. And the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense. They're still bewildered. How did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? Unfazed, even with two defenders around him and four big. That's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January! Oh. With a one-hand jam! He was not going to be denied there. Coming over was Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're not. They're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap, and they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one. But it does not matter. They don't get the punt off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner. 62 to 6, the final score. They are your D6 titleists this year. You're in 2000. Five seconds left, clock winding down. Poway has won the title. 56 to nothing over the Vista Panthers. The championship goes to Poway. Well, your double wing T option offense down by five. They're going to have to spread it out. They go with three receivers to the near side. That's the short side. One solo left. Back to throw. McHugh. McHugh under pressure. Rolls out of it. Now he's dumped and dropped. And that's the last thing they could handle. And that's not what they could do. Bellerman now can't stop the clock. Fourth. Three, and that is going to do it. Santa Margarita coming back from the dead has won the Division I State Bowl Championship 42 37 in an improbable comeback against Bellarmine of San Jose. And the Bellarmine players on the field, on their knees. Back at Levy Center, gun ecstatic, a 41 39 win over their league rival, the defending champions in D1, Palo Alto Vikings. I'm here with our player of the game, the six foot two senior, <laughs> Catherine Perez. Just call her Cat, 18 points in the game. I have to tell you, I have not seen a team look so joyous, so happy, so ecstatic than your team. What does this victory mean to you? Um. It's a lot, obviously. Um, losing to them last year, Pally, last year by 10, um, and then coming back in league and losing to them by 16 is obviously a hard um, hard thing to do. So um, we really stuck it. Um, throughout the season, we were 0-2 at the beginning of the season, and then we went on a, I think we won 15 out of our last 16 games, and um, it's just so cool. I don't know how to explain it other than that. I kid you not. You guys are so happy. The first ever CCS title in girls basketball in the history of the school. How big is it that this is how you go out as a senior able to accomplish that, help accomplish that for your school? It's so much fun. Um, we talked on, on the team um, earlier today and all the seniors said, you know, we love you guys, but we're not done playing. We don't want to be done. Although we had NorCal's, we knew that we were going on to NorCal's. We wanted to end this season with a big thing. And obviously CCS is not just something little. So um, that definitely was a huge, huge accomplishment. And I'm so proud of everyone. Everyone played so good. It was so much fun. I have to tell you, for us, it was a completely different Palo Alto squad in the yeah. second half. The intensity coming out, draining the two threes. Yeah. It really seemed to also, though, pick up your quality of play. Yeah, obviously, Pally's a great team. We wouldn't both be here if uh, we weren't that great. Um, 
they have amazing shooters. Emily Osagade, she's one of the best players in our league. Um, just keeping her uh, so that she didn't score so much was our main goal, and I think we did that very well, and it was just... I don't know whether to say that it was just so much fun. I have to bring up the physical play away oh. from the ball. How many times someone's laying on yeah. the floor with someone on top of them away from the ball? I mean, is that the kind of intensity? Is that the kind of rivalry these yeah. two schools have? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, the the trash talk before, after. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not between the players, but between the fans. Oh, I mean, okay. our six man, their six man. Yeah, so they love fun. each other, love hate relationship. It's it's a great atmosphere, and it's one that not a lot of get, many people get to play in. And the fact that we were able to play them in CCS championship game is even crazier. So, so happy, <laughs> so happy, and such a talented player, Catherine Perez, 18 points, leading the way down low for her squad and a big reason why Gunn will celebrate its first ever CCS championship team in girls basketball tonight. Thank you so much. So much fun. 41-39 over Palo Alto. Both these teams will live to see the Northern California playoffs, possibly another rematch. We'll wait and see. But right now, the night, the moment belongs to Catherine Perez and her teammates from Gunn High School. Congratulations. Thank you so much. On behalf of my partner tonight, Sean Hennessy, and earlier in the day, Casey Jackson, our crew, John Boucher, Brian Carter, the engineer, everyone at the Central Coast section in Santa Clara University, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. It was a fun one. The girls won D Division I title in CCS, won by the Gun Titans. So long from Santa Clara.